The Time Machine Did It, Chapter 9 I am the real Professor Groggins, he said. I made him show me three pieces of ID before I would let him say anything more. Then I asked him what he was doing here. He told me that the crooks had broken into his home during a routine burglary and had stolen everything from his lab that it looked like it was valuable, including the time machine that he had invented. After they found out the time machine really worked, they came back and stole Groggins himself so he could invent more useful devices for them. They kept me here for who knows how long. Two weeks, I said. I've completely lost track of time. Two weeks. Bush was president when they put me in here. Two weeks ago. He complained about his treatment he'd received since he had arrived, especially the Sunday brunch, which he felt was uninspired, and all of the evil laughing in this place was keeping him awake at night. He probably would have kept complaining indefinitely, but I reminded him that he that I didn't work there, and if I did work there, I probably wouldn't be working in the complaints department. I'd more likely have some kind of lifting job. <laughs> I asked him what he had invented for them so far. He said nothing had been completed yet, but they had him working on a machine that fixes horse races so the dishonest horse wins every time, a machine that makes their enemies nine feet tall so they can see them coming, and a milkshake machine. I just bought one of them. I, I just I just bought them one of those, he said. Then Groggins told me about the time machine, what it looked like, how it worked, and so on. After 35 or 36 hours of explanation, I figured I understood what the thing was. A briefcase, I said. Yes. I won't bore you with the technical aspects of the machine, because, like me, you're probably too stupid to understand most of it. You're good-looking, though. Damn good-looking. Don't forget that. But basically, the way it worked was this. The time mechanism itself was contained in an ordinary businessman's briefcase. All you had to do was open the briefcase, turn the machine on, fast-forward past the welcoming messages and the advertisements for other of Grogan's inventions, set the dials for the year you wanted to travel to, then wait to be blasted into the void. When the machine came to... When the machine made a connection with another time period, a five-foot square opening opened up with both the current time period and the period you were going to. This hole closed back up when your journey was complete. While the hole was open, people in both time periods could look in and see what was going on in the other time period, and shout abuse at each other. 1958 sucks! 1743 rules! That sort of thing. Only the briefcase was needed to travel through this hole. But Grogan said you should always remember to duck into a phone booth or an elevator or some other small walled-in space be before turning on the machine. You want to be in an enclosed space when you travel through time. Otherwise, you'll be hit by rocks, bottles, and other debris, he said. Why? Oh, I don't know. It's a jealousy thing, probably. Resentment. Who knows why people throw things? I more or less understood the science of the thing now, but I still couldn't figure out what crooks would want with a time machine. What would they use it for? Historical research? That seemed pretty unlikely to me. Don't make me laugh. I mean, who are they trying to fool? This is bullshit. Groggins explained that if you're a criminal, having mastery over time is very useful in a number of ways. It's good for extremely quick getaways, for example, he said. One second after committing a crime, you could be a thousand miles and four years away, and it could help you establish a terrific alibi. You can rob a bank in broad daylight, writing your name all over the people you've just robbed, then prove conclusively that you were in five other places when the robbery occurred. No one with an alibi like that has ever been convicted in the United States. You can also go back in time and steal things and return to the present with no danger of being prosecuted because the statute of limitations will have run out on the crime. I understand they've already stripped 1995 of every penny it had, and you can go back in time and win bar bets from people in the past who don't know, for example, that Lincoln is about to be assassinated. That's why Lincoln died broke. His estate had to pay out millions to gamblers. It was his own fault. He should have smelled something fishy with all those bets going down on Friday, April 14th. He should have laid some of the bets off. After hearing all this, I agreed that a time machine could be very useful to a criminal. I also agreed that Lincoln should have stuck to politics. Then I suggested Groggins must be pretty upset that the criminals were using his wonderful machine for evil purposes. He said not really. 
Some of the things he planned on using it were kind of evil, too. What irritated him was that they were, weren't being more careful with it. They left it in cloakrooms, in the back of taxicabs, tossed it in dumpsters, and so on. Sheer carelessness. Sometimes it would be days before it turned up in some lost and found somewhere. They had no respect for the machine at all. And they exercise no care when they're time-traveling, he said. They could inadvertently cause all sorts of time paradoxes and incongruities in the space-time continuum. That's what I was thinking. He went on and on about how delicate space and time was, but frankly I didn't buy it. I mean, if you think it's so easy to change the course of world events, try it. You don't need a time machine. You're already living in somebody's past and somebody else's future. Just step on a bug or something and see what that gets you. See if now you were never born, or suddenly, sudden, or suddenly now there's 50 Hitlers in your bathroom crapping all over everything. It ain't going to happen. Anyway, that's what I figured. Now that I knew what the time machine looked like, all I had to do was escape and find it. Then I could probably take the rest of the day off.